on track schools is that young people uh, have it, they're exposed to the content and to the grade level content regardless of their environments that they come from the backgrounds they're exposed to the grade level content and we have to ensure that that happens everywhere um, and that just cannot happen at on track schools it also needs to happen at citywide admits and at neighborhood schools as well and that's the work that we're doing to really ensure that tier one instruction um, is the focus of everyone so that we're we're trying to meet the needs of those young people and then we know that some will need and require tier two types of instructional strategies i mean then the third thing is is, is really looking at those um looking at those programs that have been successful in supporting some of the some of the special admission schools um, and and programs like stepping stone and others that provide additional support to young people and and focusing some of those supports to neighborhood schools that could also use individuals who would have um, and, and who could provide and build higher expectations for the young people who attend those schools as well. Ms. Dr. MacGyver. Thank you. Um, this it has to do with the how, but it's kind of the how moving forward because I have um, decided that I'm just going to keep pushing this point. I have been doing a lot of research around the correlation with climate and academic achievement, and I don't believe that we can have conversations about academic achievement in the absence of a conversation about climate. This is this is a lot of the research that I have been going through and it's all across the board says the same thing and I just want to read one quote from one of these journal um, studies Dr. School, Dr. I, I just need to I'm sorry I have to a school's climate is significantly correlated with student academic progress and under some circumstances the school climate effects outweighed the effects of student background factors school climate had a bigger effect than students background and yeah, academic achievement so i'm just i'm i'm di um, president wilkerson please bear with me i'm, yeah. I'm gonna leave this um I, I believe we need to come to an agreement on what we mean by climate because when we all talk about climate we're talking about something different and moving forward as we are looking at progress monitoring I think we need to all be talking about the same thing. Can you ask and, Dr. White how he in how he okay. climate so we can try to how do we do okay here I'm turning these into questions I'm sorry I apologize I'm getting a little bit passionate here how do how does the school district define climate and um, how it relates to student achievement in the off-track, near-track, and on-track schools. And, and the reason, yeah, how, do, how does this school district define clim school climate? So how are you defining school climate and looking at it in relation to student achievement? Yeah, so we, we define, I mean, so the climate pieces that we have on our surveys. And so we define climate as all of those supports and actions and activities that young people engage in um, that become a part of um, their educational experience. And so it's, it's all of those things outside of, um, all of those things outside of like their, their work. I mean, their, their, act, their comprehensive school work. So when, when we look at climate, we are focused on like building on the on the recommendations from that we've used in the past and really looking at like those tier one resources that we think are extremely important. So climate we define as having high expectations for all students and uh, the belief that all students can access tier one instruction. Um, and we, we, we believe that um, that can happen um, in regardless of where children attend schools. So that's how we define climate. I mean, so. And, that, and, and that's what you would propose to implement in all schools in order to, and that's part of your plan moving forward, right? Yeah, I mean, I think, yes, yes. That's, 
that's part of the plan moving forward. It's like evidence-based tier one climate programming as part of a comprehensive MTSS framework and really focusing on ensuring leadership and staff buy-in um, about the effectiveness of the well-implemented tier one approaches. Um, and so naturally there will be steps that we would take to, in order to do that. And it, it would be built into, the, I mean, it, it's our climate statement. It's developed buy-in on the importance of effective and strong tier one programming. It's identifying appropriate tier one climate programs in the school improvement planning process, right? So, uh, and then implementing through differentiated training or coaching from specialized program offices and staff. And that means partnering with groups like behavior health or um, school leadership or um, athletics or uh, robotics or whatever the, the program office is to focus on those tier one activities, appropriate activities for young people. Ms. Dancy. Okay. President Wilkerson, we have 15 minutes. Okay, Ms. Dancy. Yeah. Yeah, my question, uh, and looking at particularly our off-trite students and realizing that we're looking at them from up to the grade of 11th, which means that that 11th grader will be going into 12th grade next year with a little time to really change the tide. How do you plan to, or do you plan to use um, pop techniques and strategies targeted to that group that's going to be graduating out to see what of any of that loss can be captured, recaptured. Yes, um, Board Member Dancy, it's part of why we are administering the STAR assessments now, um, because it, yeah. it gives us some information about where young people are, um, because it, it gives us some information about where young people are, um, and then what they will need. We talk no.